Hi! It's July 24th, 2016. Um, and I'm having top surgery in 15 days, motherfuckers. Yeah. It's been a journey as like my boobs are like on full display. Hey. Um <laughs> it's been such a journey to even get this like approved. Um I, like, I still don't really believe it's happening because I'm still convinced, like, something's gonna get in my way and I'm not gonna have it, so until it's, like, July 7th, like, then I won't believe that it's actually happening. So, I'm supposed to have my surgery on August 8th of, you know, 15 days, and the cool thing is, this is part of the reason why I really hope my surgery works out, the, the date is gonna be 8... 816. So I think that's pretty cool because 8 plus 8 is 16, so it's 16, 16. I don't know. I find great symmetry with that, and it's beautiful. And if you Google the angel number for that, you'll get even more excited for me because it's pretty amazing what the number 16 means. Um, but yeah, it's, I mean, the past two weeks have been really stressful because basically what happened is I got my surgery approved back in, fuck, I don't even know, like, January? No. January? Something. Sometime in winter. A very long time ago. Or maybe it was May. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm pretty sure it was winter, though, because I think it was after, yeah, it was, like, after Christmas break. Anyway, so I got my letter from my therapist and then a medical doctor, and my surgery was approved and everything. I set the date immediately, August 8th. I was like, yes, like six months or whatever, doing it. Then on May 31st, I lost my insurance for about two weeks, and during that period, my insurance company changed the rules for gender confirmation surgery, and made it necessary that you have a letter from a psychiatrist. So I was like fucked because I didn't have a psychiatrist at the time because my psychiatrist that I had just left the practice. So I don't see him anymore. So I was like, I'm not going to be able to have my surgery because I don't have a psychiatrist. And you know, it was just a whole day of phone calls back and forth with the surgeon's office and, and, it was just, it wasn't, it was not a good day. Um, what ended up happening was I ended up meeting with my new psychiatrist and he was like, yeah, I can't write your letter because I've only known you for 15 minutes, so sorry. And I needed the letter by, I think it was the 15th, by Friday the 15th. And they were like, if you don't have the letter by then, like, we're going to have to cancel your surgery. And so I had, like, literally, like, four days to figure out this whole situation and figure out, um, because I think she called me on a Wednesday and I needed it the following Friday. And so anyway, it ended up that I went to this community health center called Cal and Lord, which is an LGBT health center. It's where I go to get my hormones and... Um, it's just like, it's LGBT centered. And I met with a nurse, a psychiatric nurse practitioner or something. And he wrote me my letter. And the really cool thing about this place was there was already a, like, draft like format for writing someone to have gender confirmation surgery so he literally just had to like fill in my name what surgery I was having he already knew the name of it and then like and then like how long they've been seeing me 
So that day, like, changed my life when I got in there to see him. And then, basically, it was, like, approved last week. Fast forward. It's taking forever. Probably going to start this video over again because it's so boring right now. Um, so now I'm having my, my follow-up appointment, my pre-op appointment on August 2nd. Um, my dad just booked his flight today. He's coming on Monday the 8th when my surgery is. He'll be getting in around like 11. I don't know when my surgery is during the day yet. Um, but yeah, so I'm having surgery. So here are my concerns. My dad is only coming for five days. He's leaving on Friday. Um, and then I'm on my own in New York in my apartment alone. Um, a lot of my trans masculine friends have offered to come help me out and stay with me, which is like amazing that they would do that. So we'll see if I do that. I really don't like asking people for help because I just feel bad. Like I feel really guilty. Um, but whatever. I'll probably need help because I don't know how I'm going to go grocery shopping. I don't know how I'm going to lift like anything. I'm really concerned about even being able to carry my bag that I bring to the hotel because we're staying at a hotel for five days um, out in the Bronx. Um, so we're staying at a hotel out there and why are we staying in the Bronx? That seems really stupid. I just thought of that. That seems really dumb. Anyway, so we're staying in the Bronx close to the hospital. And he won't even be there when I get my drains out or, like, for my reveal. So why are we staying out in the Bronx? But we can't stay here because, like, this is my room. It's small. There's no room, and I'm not making him sleep on the floor for a week because he's old, and that's mean. Um, so I'm concerned that I'm not even going to be able to carry my bag, like, home because he's not coming back to my apartment with me. He's just, like, hopping on a flight and leaving and going back to Wisconsin. And I'm just, like, everyone keeps telling me to get bendy straws, but I'm just like, I'm not going back to work after my surgery, so I literally have like three weeks of doing nothing, and then I go back into school, which is like the world's most stressful environment of life. So I'm going to have three weeks to do nothing, and I'm just like nervous about being alone. I'm afraid that I'm not going to be able to shower. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to lift anything. I'm afraid I'm not going to be able to pick up my computer because it's going to be too heavy. Like, there's so many things that I'm thinking about, like... I'm like, you can't bring your computer to the hospital with you because you're not going to be able to carry it back with you. So, yeah. And I think the biggest fear that I have is that what if when I have my surgery, because I have it in my mind that is when I have the surgery, I will automatically start passing. That the reason I'm not passing is because of my chest. Yes, when I open my mouth, that might be another reason for people to misgender me, but I feel like upon first looks of misgendering me, it's because of my chest. Because I've had people just see my face, like, even, like, on chat rooms and stuff, and say that I look like a cis guy. But I still sound like a girl, and I still have boobs, so that's kind of misleading <laughs> to people. So I just have it, and maybe I'm wrong, but I just... I am hoping that once I have surgery, I will be passing as male. And I'm trying to begin to think about preparing myself for the fact that that may not happen. And then I don't know what I'll do because there is nothing more at that point that I can do to make me feel more comfortable in my body and to present as male. Whatever situation I have currently or in the future with my bottom area is not going to help me pass. So I'm literally doing everything that I can do. Um, so I'm just nervous about how I'm going to be perceived. I think one of the big immediate changes is going to be that I'm going to feel more comfortable using the men's restroom. 
because I'm always, like, pulling out my shirt and trying to see, like, how obvious are my boobs today, like, because I don't bind. Um, so I just really hope that people will gender me correctly when I have this surgery, and then obviously that I feel more comfortable and maybe I'll love myself a little more because most of what I feel is self-hatred, and that's not a very good feeling. <laughs> So I'm sure I'll make another video um, like a couple days before crying about how nervous I am or something. I don't know. But right now I'm just kind of, I'm chill. But just thinking about the logistics of like, how am I going to carry my bag? How am I going to go grocery shopping? How am I going to do laundry like that? I didn't even think of until one of my friends brought it up. And I was like, I didn't even think of that. That I can't carry my laundry bag down the stairs. Are you kidding? Not a possibility. I didn't even think of that until now, carrying it down the stairs. I didn't think of that. I was just thinking of throwing things into a dryer. I didn't, I probably can't do that, but there's no way I can carry my laundry bag down the stairs. So I'm probably going to have to have somebody come over and help me with laundry. Fuck, I don't want to have to rely on other people. Okay, this is the longest video, and I doubt anyone is watching to this point, so I'm going to stop talking.